statistics are like a bikini. What they reveal is suggested, but what they conceal is vital. <laughs>
a atmospheric measurement thing in California. I'm going to show you four separate sets of data on this chart, and they all show negative correlation to the UN. They're all downhill. That's what's happening in the last seven years. It's actually happened in the last nine or ten. Don't you let anybody tell you that there's no proof that the planet is cooling. Okay? Because the data does not support that, and there is gods of data because we do active stuff in this last decade. Here's another one. The most accurate data there is. There's Hadley and, and, and the University of, of uh, Huntsville, which uses satellite data. See these two correlations? These are temperatures from two different data sources. This green thing is the most accurate measurement of CO2 in the atmosphere, the monoclonal data. And here's your correlation. Obviously, as CO2 goes up, the temperature goes up, right? Everybody got that? <laughs> uh, this thing looks like an EKG. It's temperature of the atmosphere for 410,000 years, right? Here's a 12,000 year period that's relatively stable. And oh, by the way, we are cooler and have been for 12,000 years than the last time it got warm, than the last time it got warm. 85,000 years we get a warm time, and the rest of the time we just about kill off every species on the planet because of ice. But the normal thing is ice and extinction, and you can't grow any agriculture. That's the normal thing. The warm periods are good. And if you look at the fossil record, you see when this country, this planet thrived, it's during these brief periods here. And when the planet's dying is when it's cold. Okay, I'm going to take this data and do some analysis. Here's the ice core data by itself. Here's the present temperature right there. Now, if something is forced to go higher and equally forced to go lower, okay, and you've got a forcing function and you've got an oscillation that gives you a sinusoid. Okay? So if this thing that makes the planet's temperature change, by the way, it doesn't change much. All the data for 410,000 years is, is smaller change overall than every day-night cycle. Earth is pretty damn powerful at keeping us at the right temperature, isn't it? Okay? But anyway, if you put a sinusoid over that data and then find the average of that, it's a couple degrees cooler. The real data, and you average that with a green line, it's five degrees cooler. But the most important thing I want you to see about this chart is the second derivative. What's the second derivative? It's the biggest change in slope in a given amount of time. Where is the big second derivative? It's where these circles are. It's going up like crazy, and before you know it, it's going down like crazy. We don't know why that happened. We don't know why. When we get a warm period, we have the biggest second derivative, in other words, the biggest forcing function, to say, let's get out of here and make it cold. Remember that conclusion that I made? If we have that, a new technology, we're going to use it to warm the planet.